I'll be up front. I don't like Need for Speed The Run. Blackbox's final game is also their worst. The run implemented every 7th generation trope it could. Nonsensically gritty story, gruff white man player character with personality of wet cardboard, shaky cam cutscenes full of unnecessary quick time events, and the most linear racing game experience I've ever had. The run was mechanically competent, as you'd expect from a Need for Speed game, but it falls short in literally every other way. I've spent the last decade adamant that the run was when the franchise truly hit rock bottom. I was right, but not in the way I thought. I'll save the development woes of the lead version of the run for another day, but in summary, Black Box were tasked with shipping three games of their own, co-developing three appropriations of their own IPs, assisting with the development of Battlefield 3, and making a new Need for Speed game in DICE's Frostbite engine. All between November's of 2008 and 2011. To call them overloaded would be an understatement. But there was another problem plaguing the run's development. When the 7th generation consoles came around, the Need for Speed franchise was slower than most to adopt their full potential. Because of the massive install base of the previous generation, particularly the PlayStation 2, and the relatively weak hardware of the Wii, the series forked into two paths of releases. Initially, the 6th gen and Wii versions were functionally identical to the newer consoles, just at lower resolutions and graphical detail, with some of the bells and whistles removed. But as time went on, the series' newest entries were too intensive for the weaker consoles to handle, even when scaled back. And so B-teams within EA had to get creative. I've reviewed two of these efforts in the past, both from English developer Exeon Entertainment. The first was Undercover, a loose translation of the main game's plot and structure, but crammed into the old engine, and cobbled together out of bits and pieces of Most Wanted and Underground 2. Then, Exeon adopted the engine of EA Montreal's Need for Speed Nitro for the Wii adaptation of the 2010 Hot Pursuit reboot. A game that was so close to being good, but ultimately came up short of both identity and personality. Two things this series cannot live without. The Wii couldn't handle Undercover's iteration of the Eagle engine, let alone Frostbite 2, but the console had an install base larger than either of its competitors, and EA were not about to leave that much money on the table. So as with Hot Pursuit the year before, an alternate version would need to be developed. That much was obvious, but less obvious was who should make it. Piling another project onto Black Box was out of the question. Exeant had parted ways with EA in favor of employment with Sony. Criterion was working on DLC for Hot Pursuit and prototyping their ill-fated concept for Most Wanted 2. Slightly mad were shipping Shift 2 Unleashed just a few months before the run, and besides, they weren't on the best terms with EA at the time. Nor were the publishers Canada-based studios. Crossing all of these off the list of usual suspects left only one possible candidate. Firebrand Games. Now, to their credit, Firebrand did have some chops when it came to racing games. The Scottish developer had years of driving game experience under their belt, mostly for the Nintendo DS. The studio was responsible for the handheld adaptations of Dirt 2 and Grid, and even some of the more recent Need for Speed titles. In 2010, they dipped their toes into the Wii market, with Track Mania Wii and Hot Wheels Track Attack. Some of these games were genuinely pretty decent. But the sheer volume of releases under each year in Firebrand's history is a giveaway that they probably weren't a quality developer. For EA's dollar, though, they had what counted. The ability to deliver a somewhat functional product that tied into a larger brand well enough to pass. So, Firebrand was chosen to head up development on the Wii and 3DS versions of the run. Exeon Entertainment's contributions to the Need for Speed brand were not good, but they were mostly inoffensive. Undercover was a solid game, if only because it was just most wanted again. And Hot Pursuit was the video game equivalent of a slice of gas station pizza. Fine, but utterly forgettable. If these games are cheap comfort food, then the run's Wii port is a military ration. It's technically food. The run for Wii is functional. It's a racing game. It's mostly bug-free. Mostly. Hell, it even looks somewhat decent for a Wii game. Firebrand delivered exactly what EA wanted. And at first glance, the run's Wii version would appear to solve the problems I outlined with the last Need for Speed game on the console. Firebrand managed to represent the thematic identity of their source material in a way that works for the platform. I did find it a little puzzling that they renamed the characters, had the voice work redone, and changed the minutia of the plot and structure, but overall, it's on par with the full version of the game. Not that that bar was set very high. And unfortunately, story is the only category in which Firebrand's adaptation matches Black Box's already mediocre product. When I say that the run for Wii is functional, I mean that in an objective sense, that it can be played from start to finish. I hold the gas, the car goes, and I win the race. I'm not oversimplifying that for dramatic effect. Where the 360 version of the run saw the player trekking through the streets of Vegas and down winding mountain roads, the Wii version instead sees the player driving on six lane highways. Six lane highways. Six lane highways. 
Oh, holy shit, an eight-lane highway. Every single event in this game consists of driving in a straight line at top speed for several minutes, with the occasional break to ram a dozen or so enemies off the road or trigger an awful half-assed quick-time event. More on those in a minute. In the rare event you come across a sharp turn, don't worry. You won't be forced to actually play the game. Instead, the game will make the turn for you, provided you can press three D-pad buttons in order. Fall below 75 miles per hour, and the game will just respawn you going 100, even if you were in the middle of fighting an enemy. Every single type of event plays the same. Police chase, hold right trigger. Races, hold right trigger. Time trial, hold right trigger. Chasing down a target, hold right trigger, until the quick time event or cutscene begins. Firebrand either think their audience are unskilled morons incapable of turning a car, or are mortified at the thought that they might have their fun spoiled by anything resembling a challenge. Whatever the perceived issue was, Firebrand remedied it by completely removing any chance for the player to fail. The game substitutes the 360 version of Michael Bay's set pieces for many games that just do not make sense. There's no traffic on the road, except for when you have to dodge it in an auto-scroller minigame. You never take any sharp turns, unless you're in a quick time event. These are just a few puzzling decisions in the series of many. Why don't my hands move? Why does a stock rental Camaro handle like an F1 car? Why can I do barrel rolls when I go off jumps? Why does the soundtrack include random club remixes of 90s Need for Speed songs? Why does the UI rip off the WRONG GAME? Why would they spend time and money creating new story beats, cutscenes, characters, levels, and voice acting, instead of just using Jack's story from the main game? And most importantly, why not just let me do all of these things in gameplay instead of in a cutscene or QTE? This game had me shaking my head in disbelief at least once per level, and I could not for the life of me figure out why the game is like this. It just doesn't make any sense. At least it didn't. And then I looked up the 3DS version of the game. Please, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I might have found the only game ever to be ported directly from the 3DS to the Wii. With this revelation, everything finally makes sense. The cutscenes are comic books because the 3DS cartridges can't hold enough pre-rendered video. The cutscenes have a jarring cut that skips action because these are touchscreen minigames on the 3DS. The roads are basically empty because the 3DS hardware couldn't handle a higher traffic density. Previous Need for CB games had separate dev teams for the Wii and handheld adaptations, but for the run, one team found themselves in charge of both. With the lead version of the run facing such obvious developmental difficulties, it's safe to assume that this version was made on a similar time crunch. It's not an exaggeration to say that this game was just dragged and dropped from the 3DS, and that only makes the visuals more impressive, but it does make me feel a bit cheated in retrospect. When playing the game for this review, I figured that the oversimplified levels and gameplay were a consequence of the game's fidelity. But after discovering the 3DS version, it's clear this wasn't the case. Toning down difficulty and complexity for a handheld platform makes sense. Leaving those untouched when porting to the big screen doesn't, and I'd argue it's unacceptable. If this video seems unusually short, well, that's because the game is too. Only about half the length of the already short 360 version. And while I'm not a fan of that version either, it must be said that it offers infinitely more challenge, replayability, and worthwhile content than Firebrand's take on the run. Because after finishing this game, there's no reason to ever replay it. You can't use different cars in the story mode. The whole concept of speedrunning the cannonball is rendered moot by enemy AI who rubber band until a certain point in the level, artificially padding out the runtime. The challenge series is completely pointless as it contains the same straight roads with basically no traffic, meaning it's just another couple hours of holding the accelerator and occasionally doing a shitty QTE. I'd hoped I'd never have to do this, but y'all, I'll be honest, this is just as bad as World War Final Fronts. I'm gonna have to start the pile, where irredeemable video games go to rot. When will you review Insert Need for Speed game here? All I can say is, be patient. I will eventually get around to every single game in the franchise. Yes, even that one. If you had to choose a game engine to live in, glitches and all, what would it be and why? Source Engine, because it's the most consistent and logical, even when it's broken. Is Need for Speed High Stakes the best game ever made? No. While it is my favorite of the 90s Need for Speed games, it takes some marked steps back from Hot Pursuit that dampened my enjoyment today. Seeing 3D rendered cockpits for the first time was really cool in 2000, but it looks objectively worse than the digitized ones from the previous three games. This isn't to say that I don't think High Stakes is a fantastic game. It is, but it's definitely not flawless. Are you ever going to make a video on the first few test drives and other really early 3D racers? 
at some point, but the problem there is mostly capturing authentic footage. I don't have any of the platforms the first and third games were released on, and emulating that era of computer has consistently confused me. I don't like relying on emulation anyways, and try to use real hardware whenever possible. I also want to cover Race Driving at some point, which seems like a logical place to work Test Drive 3 into the discussion. Do you have any interest in sports outside of motorsports? Depends on the year, honestly. I've been known to get wrapped up in the playoff seasons of hockey and basketball now and then, but other than that, not really. American football and actual football bore me to death. Baseball is fun to play but not to watch, and truthfully the only other sport I'm interested in is skateboarding. High hopes for Skate 4. Who is your favorite F1 driver and why? Hard choice. Part of me wants to say Kimi Raikkonen just because he's so iconic, but I'm not that big of a fan of him or Alfa Romeo. I believe Max Verstappen is a future champion, I want to see Sebastian Vettel succeed, and part of me hopes to see Britton Hartley make a return to the sport at some point, but I don't think I really have a favorite team or driver. I just love the sport. Why are you gay? Because, girl pretty. 